seriously, though. If we think about this, this verse, what we, what we see or what we should understand from this verse is that God created man, which includes women, of course, from the ground up. It, it was a ground-up type of creation. Now, I want to start there because I'm going to kind of use an analogy of growing things, and growing things start from the ground up, and most of us should be at least vaguely familiar with vegetation of some sort. After all, we live in a farming community, and even if we're not out on the, on the tractor or in the fields, we associate with people that farm, and many of us grow flowers and such, so we understand how plants grow. Now, when we think about plants, I want to point out the obvious, that when it comes to plants, no matter what they are, vegetation, we plant them, we grow them, we cultivate them, we tend them for the fruit. It's the fruit that we truly enjoy from plants. You know, the, the corn, the cob, the, the ear of wheat, or, or the corn, kernel of wheat, the ear of the corn. There I got it right. I sound like a farmer, don't I? <laughs> You know, tomatoes, whatever it is, it's the fruit that we enjoy. We, we eat the fruit, we feed the fruit to our animals, you know, we make jellies out of it. It is the fruit that we seek. But I want to tell you that if you don't pay attention to the root, you'll never ever enjoy the fruit. And so much, so many times in life, we do not pay attention to the root. We seek to enjoy the fruit. And do we, think, do we think about that poor old root that's down there in the mud and the dirt that's really, really doing the hard work for us? All we care about is that we can take the fruit, fruit off the vine and enjoy it. Now let's kind of change this analogy and think about it in our personal lives. There are times in our lives where we want the fruit without tending to the root. We want promotion. We want accolades. We want people to notice us. We, we want money and fame and wealth, but we don't always want to spend time cultivating the root to be able to enjoy the fruit. Now, if you think back to your childhoods, or if you're a parent right now, I, I feel sorry for you. I'm almost done with it. Nanny, nanny, boo, boo. <laughs> but if you think back to your childhood, and if you grew up with a parent like I did who was very tough on you, anybody, would anybody call your parents that they were tough on you? Mark, put your hand down. Well, by tough, I mean, I, I mean, I don't mean they were mean and nasty to you. I mean that they made you responsible for your actions. They, they tried to instill some roots in you. I mean, my mom was the kind of person who would tell me what she thought I should do, but then she would allow me to do whatever I wanted to do, which was usually exactly the opposite of what she told me. And then she would punish me for doing it. Anybody have parents like that? Mark, put your hand down. <laughs> but here's what I learned is is that when I, when I turned 18, when I graduated high school, I, I left for the Marine Corps just about 10 days after that, and I went out into the big bad world, and I learned that anything that may have happened to me in my upbringing the first 18 years was absolutely nothing compared to what I would face out there in the world. And as I lived a little bit, a little bit of life and continued to make mistakes, which we all do, I learned to appreciate my parents. How many people are old enough to think that their parents are so much smarter when you were 25 than when you were 16. Yeah? Yeah. I, I learned that all of that tough love, if you want to call it that, that my mom taught me is, is paying off. She instilled in me the roots that allowed me to go into life and to be successful. Now, we all know those people who don't have roots, who aren't brought up like that. They're the, they're, they're the everybody's a winner one, and, and, and you know, well, I just feel like I ought to be the boss. My mommy told me I was the best. But when you get out in the world, if you don't have that foundation, those roots that your parents instilled in you, it becomes very, very, very difficult. Now, I, I, and I'm not here to generation bash, because I don't want to do that. But correct me if I'm wrong. Paul's already smiling at his daughters. <laughs> correct me. His daughters are in a 
it, 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 an exception, and so is every child here, right? We're all exceptions here. Let's look out into that world. If we're older and we begin to look at, at, at generations that are below us, can't we see that so many of them don't have those roots that we were given as children? Can't we see that they're not as tough, if you want to say? They're not as resilient. They don't have the same amount of perseverance that many of us have. And, and you know, that's to their detriment. That's to their detriment. Because if you don't have a foundation from which to build the rest of your life upon, you are not going to produce fruit. And you hear it all the time out there. And I mentioned it already, but, but feelings, feelings. I, I feel like I've been here long enough that I should be in charge. I've heard that so many times at my last job. I, feel, I went to school. I feel like I ought to be making more money. I feel like you're being unfair to me. I feel like we ought to all just win. Can I tell you something without hurting anybody's feelings? <laughs> Success in this world has absolutely nothing to do with your feelings. Success in this world is about commitment. It's about commitment. It's about being committed to what you're doing and who you are. It's about being committed to yourself. You see, if you don't have commitment, you might be successful, but it won't last very long. You see, achievement, commitment, they go hand in hand. And if you don't have stewardship, that commitment to continue to, to take care of that fruit, then ultimately you'll be a failure. That's why our foundations, our roots are so incredibly important. Let's, let's take marriage, for example. Let's bash a little bit on marriage, or let me bash a little bit on marriage. Did you know that it's easier in Colorado to get married than it is to get a hunting license? It is. Honestly, if you want to get a hunting license, you have to actually go through 8, 10, 12 hours of hunter safety, and you have to pass a test, and you have to have this little card to be able to get a hunting license. If you want to get married in Colorado, if you're 18, you and your fiancé, whether it be a man or a woman, and, and even those boundaries are getting blurred, you go down to the clerk of court and you say, we want to get married, you present an ID, you fill out a little bit of paperwork, they give you the marriage license, and then, and then you go off into town, and did you know that, did you know this, that anybody in Colorado can marry you? You can find a sterno bum on the street with the I will work for food sign, give him a fiver, and he can marry you as long as you have two witnesses. That's the process of marriage. So we get married because it's so simple, then what? Well, the next obvious thing is have kids, right? We really enjoy producing children, so let's just have some kids. <laughs> then what? Well, I'll tell you what, then what? Then reality hits. Then you, you finally figure out that you don't have the roots to support that marriage. You don't know how to come home to the same man or the same woman day after day after day. You don't know how to work through difficulties. You don't know what to do when you wake up and they have bad breath and you chew your arm off so you don't have to look at them. <laughs> and kids, don't even get me started on kids. Who's going to change the diaper? And I don't do snotty nose. I've heard parents, I don't do puke. Well, <laughs> you're in the wrong business, pal. And then when it comes to raising children, as a former teacher, I believe that I can attest to this, it's not enough to dress Johnny up and send him off to school and tell him it's their job to educate their children, because it doesn't work. So raising children, families, you must have the foundation necessary in order to do that. You must have the roots in place in order to be successful, not only for you, but for your children. If you want to enjoy your marriage and you want it to last and you want to enjoy your children and see your children grow up and be productive members of society, you have a little bit of preparation to do if you're a young person. You have to create that foundation. You have to have those roots. And it goes for us in our personal lives as well. If we want to reap success, we have to set the foundations up in order to ensure that. And it comes in our, in our Christian walk too. 
If you want God to give you good things and you want to reap the benefits of God and His power, you have to set a good foundation. It's all about foundations, people. Everybody say foundation for me, please. Okay, so now I've talked forever about that, but what are our foundations? You might know them by a different word. Your values. When it all comes down to it, when it all boils down to what's going to make you successful as an individual in the workplace, as a husband, as a wife, as a mother, as a father, as a member of society, it all boils down to your values. Now, I'm not talking about morals and ethics because morals and ethics are stuff that we, we talk about. Your values are who you are and what you do. You know, if I followed you around for a week, everybody think about this for a second. If I followed you around for a week, everywhere you went, you know, I'm not going to the bathroom with you. you, you get my point. If I followed you around for a week, would it be obvious that you're a Christian? Would I even know you? What are your values? That must be your foundation from which the, your entire life is built upon. And when we talk about our values, this is what I'm talking about. What can I expect you to do? In the worst of situations, in the best of situations, what can I expect from you? Not just when you're sitting here in church in your Sunday best and paying attention to the pastor and trying not to fall asleep. But when things go wrong, what can I expect you to do? What can I expect you not to do? What can I expect you not to do, even in the worst of situations? If the bar keeps getting lowered because it's peer pressure or your life just stinks, where does that bar stop and you say, I won't go there anymore? Where are your boundaries? Do you even have boundaries or do you live day by day? These, these are your values. What do you really care about? I mean, I, I, I don't want to hear about, oh, I, I love cars or I don't, not that. What do you really, really, really care about? And what will you give up for those things that you care about? These are the values that I'm talking about. These are the values that make family, family. These are the values that make you successful at work, at home, in the married life, as a mother, as a father, and in society. These are the values, the foundation that you must have to be successful. This is the root that takes the gift given by God and produces lasting fruit. Consider this. If we talk about root and fruit some more, use another analogy. We go to buy a house. Now, most of us get captivated by the bling, by the fruit of buying a house. We, we meet our local realtor, and they take us to the nicest house there is. And, of course, the people that are selling the house have made the house look really nice. So it's got great curb appeal. And then you go inside, and they've staged the house. And there's nice throw rugs everywhere. And there's beautiful leather couches. Don't mind that when you move in, you're going to have a tattered rug and an old hand-me-down couch. But when you walk through the house, it's beautiful. You notice the walls and the wallpaper and the, and the paint and how many bedrooms and how many bathrooms it has. And maybe they have curtains hanging and the open kitchen. And you get my point. That is all the fruit. But as anybody would tell you, before you buy that house, you better walk down into the basement and you better check out that foundation. Because you can have all the fruit you want upstairs, all the pretty stuff upstairs, but if that house isn't built on a found, strong foundation, it's going to fall apart around you. Are some of our lives falling apart because we haven't built our lives on the right foundations? Because we haven't cultivated the root. I want to read you some scripture. If you have your Bibles with you, which I know everyone does, everybody say yes. Yes. Of course you do. Turn to the Old Testament, um, the book of Ezra, and I'll be reading from chapter, verses 8 through 11, um, third chapter, verses 8 through 11 in Ezra. And God's word says, in the second month of the second year after their arrival at the house of God in Jerusalem, Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, Joshua, son of Josadak, and the rest of the people, the priests, and the Levites and all who had returned from the captivity to Jerusalem began the work. They appointed Levites, 20 years old and older, to supervise the building of the house of the Lord. Joshua and his sons and brothers, and Cadmiel and his sons, descendants of Hodaviah, 
and the sons of Henadad and their sons and brothers, all Levites, joined together in supervising those working on the house of God. When the builders laid the foundation, everybody say foundation, please. When the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, the priests in their vestments and with trumpets and the Levites and the sons of Asaph with cymbals took their places to praise the Lord as prescribed by David, king of Israel. With praise and thanksgiving, they sang to the Lord. He is good. His love towards Israel endures forever. And this is the part that really matters. And all the people gave a great shout of praise to the Lord because the foundation, everybody say foundation, foundation. of the house of the Lord was laid. They got together and they had a big old party. They broke out the kegs, they got the pizza, they put on their best clothes, they turned up the music, and they had a party. Not because they had built a temple, not because there were grand columns or gold encrusted statues or innate woodwork. They had a party just because there was a slab of stones laid that was the foundation of the temple to come. How many of us have parties for just laying a foundation? How many of us get excited about doing the dirt work in our lives? How many of us are happy to go back to school and get an education? How many of us love seminars? How many of us love meetings where they're educational? How many of us love and set aside and, and never, ever, ever miss quiet time with God? How many of us get that excitement, excited over laying the foundation in our lives? Not many of us. God is telling us, if you want the fruit, you have to take care of the root. You have to build a strong foundation. One more piece of scripture I want to share with you. It comes from Matthew. That's the first book in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. And it comes from the 7th chapter, verses 24 through 27. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and then beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation. Everybody say foundation. foundation. On the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. Now, we often use the analogy in these verses that Jesus Christ is a rock, and that's absolutely true. But what else serves as a rock in our life? What other foundations do we need to make sure our house is built upon? There's some points that I want to kind of draw out of those verses real quickly. First of all, a foundation is necessary in all cases. I don't care what it is you're doing, if you go in uneducated or unready or unprepared, chances are it's going to fail. You have to lay that foundation. You have to take care of those roots. You have to do the dirt work first. And it begins with your values. Your values are going to make you do that dirt work properly and maybe even allow you to enjoy it. Storms will come. Anybody here, raise your hand, has never been through a storm in their life. Okay, I'm talking to the right people then. Storms will come. I don't care how good you are, how bad you are, where you are in between. I don't care how much you pray, how much you sing. I don't care what it is you do. Storms will come in your life. And let me give you a hint. It's too late to build the foundation when the shutters are banging and the rain's coming down. I see people all the time. Oh no, my life is falling apart. Now I'm going to go back and build that foundation. It's usually too late. You have to build the foundation before the storm comes. If you build your foundation on sand, on bad values, chances are it will fall on rock, rock hard, solid values. And finally, and this is just from me, and I hope you agree with me, building foundations is not necessarily fun. Can we agree with that? That it's not a whole lot of fun to do the dirt work but it's necessary. It's really, really necessary. If you ask people who have made it by whatever standards you say made it, I'll bet they'll tell you I worked long and hard to get where I am today. And I had good morals. And that's why I'm where I'm at. Nobody, nobody really truly enjoys 
year after year of being, getting prepared to grow the fruit. We all just want the fruit, right? Or reach out and grab that ring. But it takes preparation. Build a strong foundation from the ground up. Now, I want to finish today. I want to finish today with a really, really graphic illustration of what it looks like when you try to produce fruit without having the correct foundation, without the cor correct roots. Now, parents, I'm going to warn you, you might want to cover your children's eyes, and men, you might want to hold on to your women because this is going to be graphic. This is what fruit displayed without the proper foundation looks like. Now, I have often thought that in order for an individual to wear spandex, they should have to go get a license, right? Because spandex is not for everyone. And now, in this woman's defense, I, I mean no disrespect. I'm sure this woman is a, is a wonderful, wonderful woman. She's probably a good Christian. She probably gives tithes 10% and gives to the poor and helps. That's not my point. But the point is that she is trying to produce fruit without having the right root. Okay? It looks like she has 10 pounds of banana pudding in there. And, and spandex is really the fruit, right? Spandex is, I mean, it, it is a way to show off with you either what God endowed you with or what you have worked hard to achieve. And this woman is trying to get fruit without having the proper root. I know that's graphic. I know it's crude. But I want to leave you with this in your mind. The next time you go into something and you fail miserably at it, I want you to think about this woman in the spandex. Did I build the correct foundation? Why am I failing? Did I not tend the root before I tried to produce the fruit? It's important, people. It's important in your religious life. It's important in your family life. It's important in your social life and your work life. Take time to cultivate the root. And God promises you, that is God's promise, that it, eventually you will reap the fruit. Or not. <laughs> Let us pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you for your word, which, which tells us that, that we need to prepare for success, that, that we have to build the right foundation, we have to have the right values, we have to tend the root so that we can use our gift to enjoy the fruit. I pray that each person here heard this message, receives this message, and allows it to change their life in some way. And it is through Jesus Christ that we pray. And all the Lord's people say, Amen. Amen. We're going to finish up with a song called Days of Elijah. Anybody ever think about what's going to happen when Jesus comes again? You should be. You should be. He's going to come with a shout and an explanation. And then our lives are going to go one of two ways. We all pray that we go the right way. Will you stand and sing with me today, please?
are the days of Ezekiel. The dry bones becoming as flesh. And these are the days of your servant David rebuilding a temple of praise. And these are the days of the harvest. The fields are as wide as your world. And we are the laborers in your vineyard declaring the word of the Lord. Behold, he comes. Riding on the clouds, shining like the sun, at the trumpet call, lift your voice, it's the year of Jubilee, and out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. There's no God like Jehovah, there's no God like Jehovah. 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 Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. At the trumpet call, lift your voice. It's the year of Jubilee, and out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds. Shining like the sun at the trumpet call, lift your voice. It's the year of Jubilee, and out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. Out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. Out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. I want to thank you all for the recognition that the board gave me. And am I dropping stuff? Nope, David is. The recognition that the board gave me, and, and, and I truly do appreciate my time here with you, and I feel blessed and honored to be here. So thank you that very much, and I pray that you all have a wonderful week. And Vanessa. Let us go forth into the world in peace and dedicated to your service, O Lord. Let us hold fast to that which is good. Render to no person evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the needy and the afflicted. And honor all people. Let us love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of his spirit. And may the peace of the Lord be with you. Also, God bless you all. Thank you.